Moving on, we know about China's rare earth strike on US. Many of you may have been thinking about this. Why did China wait till now to pull the rare earth lever? We have seen US is bullying all these years, USA sanctions and threats. So why China never behaved so aggressively? You know, why not in Trump's first term or when Biden rolled out chip controls three years ago? The short answer is one word you don't usually hear in prime time, and that is helium. Yes, the party balloon gas, except this party balloon runs rockets, MRIs, quantum labs, and chip machines. So here is a simple story. Until just three years ago, China was importing about 95% of its helium, 95%. Most of that flow sat under American control. Four of the top 10 companies, helium producers, were American firms. The other six relied on US tech. So if Beijing had slammed the rare earth door back then, Washington could have answered with a helium choke. Beijing saw that trap. And Chinese researchers were blunt about it. If the US cut helium, China would feel real pain right in the sectors where a cold head matters most. Quantum, space, medical. No helium, no cool, no cool, no chips. It is that basic. So what did Beijing do? It did not treat, it built. Seven helium extraction plants moved from PowerPoint to production. Imports were diversified away from US and towards France like Russia. The science machine went into beast mode, new tech for getting helium out of domestic gas fields, new methods for purifying and storing it. So serious, China's Academy of Sciences gave its last year's top prize to a helium project with a very direct message. We broke the monopoly, our helium is secure. By the end of the previous year, dependence on US helium had crashed to under 5%. Five. Shackles off. And that is the quiet rule of power. People forget. It is not about big speeches. It is about what you can actually do when someone turns a screw. Countries don't refuse the dollar or fight sanctions because they walk up brave. No, they do it because they have options they have backup they have supply chains they have factories they have know-how if you don't have those you must swallow the insult and write a think piece if you do have those you say no and keep the lights on and you fight back beijing did the boring heavy lift across the board chips energy gear, telecom stacks, pharma inputs, and yes, the helium to keep the most delicate machines cold to behave. China can now officially fight back. It can now say no to US bullying. Can your country do that? Tell me in the comment box, is your country truly sovereign? So yes, this is depressing and inspiring at the same time. Depressing because it shows the size of the mountain if you want real sovereignty. It is not a slogan. It is a decade of plumbing, chemistry, logistics and wiring. Inspiring because China proved you can do it fast if you decide, fund and execute without drama. I hope Europe is taking notes and not selfies. Sovereignty is not a speech in Brussels, it is a gas plant in the desert. It's a magnet line in a small city you cannot pronounce. So what are the takeaways? We have four takeaways here. First, timing is everything. China did not hesitate. It sequenced. Rare earths only became a clean shot after helium risk dropped from 95% to noise. Second, power is options. If you cannot replace a supply, you cannot retaliate. You can only complain. China spent years building options. Now it can retaliate with a straight face and a steady grid. Third, sovereignty is systems, 
not just mines, not just money, systems, extraction, refining, equipment, logistics, law, insurance, people. You miss one, you crawl. You build all, you stride. And the fourth, the West still has muscle, but the old comfort is gone. You cannot ban one tool and assume the other side has no plan. They do. And they are patient. And that is all for now. Thank you very much for being with me. You're watching GNF.